In Japanese cinema, there is someone who, at least to me, is quintessential viewing, and that is Takeshi Kitano. Now, Kitano, or as he's known in Japan, Beat Takeshi, is a comedian who started out, of course, as a comedian, in a thing known as Manzai, in which two people perform a routine, one telling the jokes while the other acts it out or reacts in an over the top way. <laughs> He was a massive media personality in Japan, so much so when he tried to play a serious role in the film, that being 1983's Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence, he found that the audience laughed at him despite the film being an anti-war film. This would affect his career for many years due to his comedy background. But he would then strike fame with his TV show Takeshi's Castle, which is a game show which involved partaking in dangerous challenges in order to eventually take over Takeshi's Castle for the hefty prize of 1 million yen which equates to 700-500 British pounds, which doesn't really seem worth it considering the things the contestants went through. Really testing your suit? There you are, now. Ah, I was screaming for dramatic effect. Well, I was moved by it. And here you are, ready to take on the second holder, wow! That being the thing that he is known for mostly around the world, outside of Japan, of course, due to influencing other game shows such as Total Wipeout or Wipeout as it's known in America and just the overall insanity of the show, and it's still well known and remembered today. Now, on to his films. Now, Kitano was cast in a film called Violent Cop, which was supposed to be directed by Kenji Fukasaku, who was one of Japan's greatest filmmakers, who pulled out and thus Kitano directed and rewrote the script, but uncredited himself. The film follows Kitano who plays Azuma, a gambling addict and aggressive cop, who lives with his intellectually disabled sister, who he is very protective of. His friend Iwaki is found out to be selling drugs within the police force, in which he is eventually killed and his sister is kidnapped, and thus he must literally break the law in order to find those responsible. A key thing in all of Kitano's films is the plot doesn't really matter, in the sense it's not really the point of the story or what he's focusing on. Now this film is probably Kitano's weakest largely due to the fact it's his first time directing and thus he's not going to be perfect with the film, sometimes the film feeling quite unfocused. However it would have glimpses of what would be Kitano's black comedy style. <coughs> It's made obvious throughout the film what Azuma is quite a morally grey, irresponsible character. For example, allowing his fellow policemen to get beat up while not intentionally he does allow them to, and beating up kids, which while not good people, they are still children. And in this scene in which he finds Iwaki's murderer and the man who kidnapped his sister, he tries to kill him while the police officers try to prevent him from doing so, even eventually shooting another police officer by accident. The film having some great individual scenes, the most famous probably being around a 10 minute sequence in which a murder suspect takes the police at least 10 minutes to catch him due to their incompetency, three of them getting beat up, one's head bashed in with a baseball bat and Azuma eventually having to run him over twice in order to catch him. The main critique of this scene, however, being whether or not the music was necessary due to at telling the audience what to feel. This is something Katana would improve on later on in his other films. But overall, is a great first feature. Boiling Point is the film in which Katano started to find his own signature style, using much longer takes, quick bursts of extreme violence, with minimal music, especially in this film, editing cut into an aftermath of a scene, and a signature dark but funny black comedy style. This film is very strange in the fact it has two main characters, who are in some way the same version of the same person. The film starts with a scene in which the main character, a lousy bored baseball player known as Masaki, who doesn't know the rules of the game, walking out of the toilet, which will be important later on. He eventually gets himself mixed up with the Yakuza. He, along with his friend, decide to buy a gun for safety, and end up in Okinawa, which happens in a lot of Kitano's films, in which a large chain of violence occurs. Now the film is quite interesting, as there seems to be a lot more going on, some blimini, 
two main characters seem to be a weird yin and yang version of each other, as despite his bored nature, Masaki is able to enter a loving relationship and stand up for himself. Meanwhile, during literally the midpoint of the film, Kitano enters the picture, becoming the main protagonist, playing a sadistic, abusive Yakuza member who forces his friend to cut off his finger and to have sex with his girlfriend, even eventually trying to sodomise that same friend. A lot of the comedy coming from Kitano himself and his constant hitting and abuse of his girlfriend, the film sort of suggesting the idea that Makasaki sees himself like the Yakuza that Kitano plays. However, throughout the film he grows to hate that viewpoint. The film culminating in Kitano killing the Yakuza boss in Okinawa, however, eventually being killed himself, alongside his friend. While Masaki drives a truck into the Yakuza building in Tokyo, and it explodes, and it ending how the film started, suggesting whether or not it happened, or if it's going to happen, or that of Masaki wants to be a gangster, a sort of dream sequence. This film establishing what Katana would later go on to do with his other films. This is Katano's game changer film, and his non gangster, other non gangster films, one that is called Getting Any, in which the whole point is the main character wants to have sex in a car. Yes, I'm being serious. He had started to collaborate with Joe Hiyashi, who is one of the most well known composers of all time, and is known for his work with Studio Ghibli and is one of the best composers of all time. And it's very noticeable as the film's main song is incredible. The film takes place again in Okinawa, in which Yakuza members are sent to deal with a gang war. However, it becomes increasingly obvious that he have been set up to be killed. Now the film is one of Kitano's most substantive films, as his main focus is really on the pointlessness of the Yakuza and their, I guess, existentialism. They go through it during this film, and the violence they cause, with them realising there is a better way of life, outside of the criminal world. Now a lot of the film scenes just deal with them essentially having fun on the beach, or dancing. The most famous scene being one in which they play Russian Roulette. <laughs> This feeling of increasing nihilism is evident in the film mostly demonstrated brilliantly in the sudden bursts of violence. <laughs> Due to their almost disappointing nature, this is truly enhanced during the final scene in which he goes to Yakuza clan building and kills both clans. However, we don't see it, thus shielding us from the violence, which in reality we don't really have to see, and provides an anti-violence message as each of the other characters will go on to continue to be hunted down. However, there is a young guy who is with Kitano before he does this, and throughout the film he swears he must get revenge, thus continuing the cycle of violence. However, when he sees what Kitano aka Murakawa is capable of, he is scared and runs away, breaking the cycle. The film ending him with Miyuki, a girl Murakawa, Kitano, saved from a rape and grew into a relationship with throughout the film. He gets into her car and then... stopping the film's incredible score in the process. Overall, this is where Kitano truly starts to realise his craft and perfect it, leading me on to his next film, the one that truly changed everything. Now, for some context. Kitano, in 1994 August, got into a motorcycle accident, which he later admitted to was an unconscious suicide attempt and caused paralysis partially on his right side of his face. Nearly ending his career, during this period he took up painting, which featured in art galleries and soundtrack of albums of his films. However, these would be used in his most critically acclaimed film, Hanabi, or in English, Fireworks. This is where it truly changed for Gitano. Something I've neglected to mention is the fact these films did quite poorly in Japan. Besides his non-gangster film, Kids Return, they all did really, really bad, and Gitano himself 
was never taken seriously as a filmmaker inside Japan, only really being taken seriously by the European press. However, this film changed that, and he was finally taken seriously as a filmmaker due to winning the Golden Line a prestigious film award given at the Venice F Film Festival, which has been won by the prestigious filmmaker Kira Kurosawa, who is considered not just Japan's greatest director, but one of the greatest in the medium's history. And this made a Japanese critic call Kitano the true successor to Kurosawa himself. Which is a massive statement, but has a validity, as Kurosawa liked to use the film's visuals to its advantage, which this film also does. The film incorporates Kitano's paintings throughout it, in one particular sequence, they do it brilliantly alongside the terrific score from Hiyashi again, as the film is much more abstract than his others, with scenes like the painting scenes, the credit scenes, or the ending scene which features minimal dialogue focusing on the waves of the sea, that all truly add to the film as it essentially follows Gitano, a police officer, who leaves the police force after his friend is put in a wheelchair and more importantly, he blames himself for his colleague's death, which is shown throughout the film in multiple flashbacks, haunting Kitano. Meanwhile, he decides to live his life to the fullest with his wife, who is, of course, dying. The latter part of that statement being what this film truly is really about, living your life to your fullest. As all the other stuff that Kitano's film would have, it does have. Bursts of brutal violence, long takes, black comedy style. So. However, this time, in my opinion, there is also more going on with these scenes with minimal dialogue and beauty, like the painting scenes and the scenes with his wife, whether it's him cheating by looking at the card through the front mirror of his car or him pretending to kill a bystander. The film also featuring probably some of the most brutal scenes in any of his films. However, a lot of it seems in some way justified, like this scene in which a guy tries to make fun of an annoyed Kitano's wife, essentially calling her mentally challenged, and Kitano continuously pushing him in the water. <laughs> The film's title being really smart as it's obviously about Firewatch, which there is a beautiful abstract scene in the film featuring that, incorporating Katano's paintings alongside it. But also something about something beautiful fading out of existence, which in the film's final scene, Katano kills himself and his wife. The film overall being Gitano's most critically acclaimed film and to many people his masterpiece, which I do agree with as it feels like his most focused film in my opinion. Now after this point Takeshi Kenza just did what he wanted to, thus resulting in possibly his biggest mistake slash regret, that being his 2000 film Brother which was his attempt to get big in America, which failed and Takeshi himself says he regrets doing it. This alongside Takeshi's castle is the thing he is probably most famous for and for good reason. He basically just plays himself, the character even being called Kitano. He's a teacher who signs up his students to the Battle Royale program to battle teenage delinquency by the totalitarian government. Of course, this isn't Kitano's film, it's filmed by the man who was supposed to film Violent Cop, and his final film ever, which is a very great, incredible final film to have, and Kitano plays a big part in that. <laughs> And if you're going to be in one film, this is the one to be in, due to it kind of being one of the most influential pieces of media of all time, considering the size of media it influenced, aka Fortnite.
けうまかったな After this, Katana would kind of just do random films he wanted, from Satoichi, The Blind Swordsman, which he admitted was just for entertainment but still a great samurai flick, to his outrageous series of films, to appearing in Ghost in the Shell, the first time he appeared in an American film since the 1995 film Johnny Mnemonic. Shinji. And as of recently, his film appeared at the 2023 Cannes Film Festival to good reviews, but that's about it. So overall, that is my video on one of Japan's greatest filmmakers, whose work, while well known, I believe, is still underrated and has some gangster films that should be up there with the greats. So yeah, a great filmmaker, everybody should check him.